Well, the Oregon Ducks are bringing in a top 10 ranked class, and the class grew from what we thought it would be this morning. A four-star top 50 ranked player in the country, Jeremiah McClellan, a wide receiver out of St. Louis, was initially leaning towards Ohio State, but we found out, nope, he's heading out west to play for the Oregon Ducks. He joins a list of massive talent. I mean, this is, again, a top 10 class nationally ranked for Oregon as this is a school that is joining the Big Ten this upcoming summer. And we're glad to bring in their head coach now, Dan Lanning, who is really good at this whole recruiting thing. Dan, thanks so much for joining us. How is the recruiting philosophy for you different now that you're joining the Big Ten this upcoming year? Yeah, it really doesn't change. Um, you want to bring, bring uh, great players to your to your team that can add value, um, that have great character, and are uh, excited about being part of a great team. And you know, I, I, more than anything, I feel like teams are going to have to adapt to some of the things that we do. But it always starts up front with us. We want to bring some guys that can win in the trenches, um, and then add elite skill and talent around those guys. How do you view the state of California and its importance to your recruiting? Yeah, it's very important. There's great football played there in the state, um, and we want the best players in the nation to come here. So that starts with winning, you know, closer here to home and here on the West Coast, like in places like California. It feels like there's a heavy emphasis on defensive talent in this class. Agree? Yeah, we certainly wanted to add, add some great pieces, um, you know, to, to that side of the ball. Um, but I wouldn't say that was the only uh, focus point. You know, obviously we had some – uh, great swings today for the Ducks that are going to add to our offensive side of the ball as well. We want to be a complete team, um, but that's that's certainly where a lot of it starts is on the defensive side of the ball. I know there's some logistics, and it's tricky to talk about specific transfers at this point, but we do know some of the names that have been reported that are heading your way. What have you made out of your additions in the transfer portal this year? Yeah, I'm really excited about the guys we have coming in. Um, you know, I think more than anything, people realize the success that our players have had since they've been here and since our staff's been here. Um, so we're always looking to add, you know, top-notch talent that can, again, add to our team. And, and we've been really good in the portal uh, so far, and we've been really good in, you know, high school recruiting. I think when you have a great balance there, it gives you an opportunity to develop a great team. What did you learn from recruiting from your time at Georgia? Adapt. Learn to adapt. You know, that's one thing. Um, and then persistency, right? You know, you, you it has to be consistent. You know, um, it's kind of like shaving. If you don't do it every day, you're going to start to grow some whiskers you don't want to see. So um, you have to recruit every, every single day. You have to build relationships every single day. And relationships over time will win. I don't want to be a smart ass, Dan, but I can see you are not shaving every day. I'm just saying. Yeah, when you work the phone, you don't have a lot of time for that. Good call. <laughs> what stands out about this edge rusher, Elijah Rushing? A dynamic player, um, you know, comes from a great family, um, works, you know, works his tail off, has a lot of talent, but really probably more than anything, his eagerness and hunger um, to learn how to be better. You know, he has a, a dynamic skill set. There's not a lot of guys that are his size in the nation with his speed and athleticism, um, but he's just as anxious to learn how he can improve and how he can develop. I mentioned Jeremiah McClellan, the wide receiver. What made him so enticing to you guys? Well, it starts with him as a person. You know, we got got on the phone uh, earlier today after he signed his paper, and the first thing he tells me is, Coach, I just got a 94 on my last final. So um, he's not just an elite football player. He's an elite person. He comes from a phenomenal family, um, from a great school there at CBC. They've won a lot of state championships and had a lot of success. So excited about all the things he adds to our program, not just um, the player, but but also the person. Before I let you go, I mean, you're, you're going to be joining the Big Ten soon, so you are new to so many people around this area. Recruit me. Give me a shot. Let's pretend I was a great athlete. What are the things you're going to say to get me to come play at Oregon? Well, the first thing I'll tell you is it's not about picking the most convenient. It's about picking the best. And uh, Oregon has proven over time that we have some of the best facilities, some of the best people, um, some of the best resources in the nation. And if you want to compete and be a part of a team that's going to win, this is a team that's trending in that direction. Sold. I'm a duck. You in? Yeah, you Let's did go. it. <laughs> Dan Lanning, congratulations on this class. Thanks so much for giving us some of your time. Appreciate it, Mike. Have a good one. All right, let's take a look at the Oregon rankings. They are already up to four right now, and that is quite good. In fact, the best they've had in this small amount of time. 
Turn our attention to Ryan Pelham. He is a guy that was going to be going to USC as one of their top players. He was their third-ranked prospect. He's a top-100 player nationally, and he flipped. He's going to Oregon. So that's partly why, you know, in the prep for research, all their top guys at Oregon were defense, and yet they add wide receiver, <laughs> wide receiver, skill player guy. There's a ton of talent coming into an already talent stacked program and he couldn't talk about the quarterback transfers but Dylan Gabriel going to Oregon is a big deal. Absolutely one of the biggest deals in the transfer portal at a time where a lot of quarterbacks were moving around. This is a really good fit. He's originally from Hawaii so there's a connection there. I think he was a big Marcus Mariota fan. Fits the system extremely well. He has to have looked at what Coach Landing and his staff did with Bo Nix this season. Uh, outstanding production out of him. And Dylan can make a lot of plays with his feet. They didn't use Bo as much with his feet this year. I think, Dylan, maybe they'll do that a little bit more with him. But uh, I think a massive pickup for them. And he's going to have a lot of weapons. We mentioned Ryan Pelham. And then Jeremiah McClellan today flipped from Ohio State. So you got two major flips of that position in the same day. McClellan had just an outstanding senior season. He came into the year already considered a four-star recruit. I think he moved up even more after what he did, played in the state title game with a broken foot and put on just an incredible show in that game can do a little bit of everything. I mentioned earlier, I think the strength of this class is the defensive line. Elijah rushing one of the best in the entire country at that position could have gone just about anywhere. Six foot six, 250 pounds and can play on the edge at that size. I think that's why he's so rare. Got a combination of just a little bit of everything. Size, length, explosiveness. He can change directions and can bend the corner and get leverage at that size. He's going to be a problem for opposing offenses. Speaking of which, uh, Sione Leole, a, the number two junior college player in the entire country, a California guy out of high school, six foot three, six foot four. You see how long and big this guy is, but he can play corner at that size. He ran track in high school, ran in the 10 nines. So he's got legitimate speed that you just don't see in a six foot 490 pounder very often. I think he's gonna step in and play, uh, play immediately for the Ducks. Tian Gray, um, we talked about some of these West Coast schools stepping more into Big Ten country. He's a St. Louis kid, was recruited on both sides of the ball as an offensive tackle and a defensive lineman, but he's going to play defensive line for Oregon. Another guy with just huge upside. You look at his frame and his size, 6'5", 290 pounds, going to be able to play in a lot of different, I think he can play in an odd front or an even front. Aiden Breland is a guy that I think is going to be able to help them immediately, <laughs> day one. When you have a guy that, that's 6'5", 290 pounds, physical at the point of attack, is playing in his opponent's backfield, has played at such great against such great competition out there, that he's a guy that's going to be able to play right away. You see him being able to read what's happening from a defensive lineman perspective and being able to make plays. Lopa's another guy that's really long and rangy. See him doing a lot of work at the safety position, Another one of these long guys that can make plays for you. I think they, that this young man gives them a lot of position versatility, whether it's going to be in the secondary or he can come down and play at the outside linebacker position. Cornerback Ife Obadegwu is coming from all the way out on the East Coast in Maryland. He went to St. Francis Academy, which plays some high-level high school football. He's the number two player in the state. And what I really like about him, he's, he's got mature technique, great eyes in his back pedal. Good technique and hand placement. And, you know, he showed patience and discipline on double moves. So overall, well-rounded prospect. Howard, you're talking about size in this Oregon class. How about Jaquan McRoy? Mm. Six foot eight, 350 pounds. That's NFL size. And in fact, he's one of the best offensive linemen in high school. But he's got good feet for a big man. To be expected, though, at that size, he does play high a little bit at times and relies on it too much. If he can learn to bend and dial in his technique, be a name to watch out for for years to come. And we talked about Dylan Gabriel. He'll be the starter. <laughs> How about five-star Dante Moore? Oregon has their quarterback position locked down today, tomorrow, and for the future. What I loved about Dante Moore, rarely do you see a guy that's a starter transfer into a backup role, but he said why he chose Oregon is he wants to be developed. I thought that was an extremely mature thing for him to say, and it bodes well for his future as well as the Oregon Ducks' future. I think the future looks incredible in Eugene. Yes. I mean. <laughs> you have to remember who's, who's running the program. And he started, he got his name, Coach Lanning, from being a recruiter as a GA. That's how he separated himself. And then to go to Georgia and to understand how to recruit under Kirby Smart, who 
got it from Nick Saban to bring the fun into it. This is a team that he's going to make very physical. When he said there's not going to be any difference, it's just because he knows what he wants to recruit because he's been in programs that recruit at the highest level.